It's the DNP Project Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Molly Bradshaw and Dr. Tracy Vitale. So welcome everyone to the DMP Project Podcast, where we share tips, inspiration, and more. And today, first up, we have kind of a two-part series coming up with Alexandria Rosa, and she's going to be sharing two things with us. One is her tip on speed reading. Uh, if you're a student or a doctoral student that might benefit from the, per the perks of speed reading. And then in the second part, she's going to tell us a little bit more about her work. Um, she's a DMP student, and she's also a nurse that has her own uh, coach and wellness business where she is helping women gain clarity and confidence to create the life they crave. So first, welcome, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about you and about your nursing career and, and kind of where are you at on that path? Oh my, so I've been in healthcare in general for over 15 years now. Um, I started off as an STNA or like a nurse aide. It's called different things in different areas. Mm -hmm. So I did uh, nurse aide, then I got my LPN, then I got my RN. I went in to get my bachelor's. And then the last about three years, I've been working on a BSN to DNP program at Ashland University, um, really kind of focusing on health systems leadership, um, I also got a teaching certificate in that program as well. Um, I have my clinical background is all mostly ICU. I've kind of done a little bit of everything. Most recently it's ICU. Um, I'm a clinical instructor as well for two schools nearby me. Um, and I just love teaching, educating, uh, really like inspiring other students. And um, I've done kind of a little bit of everything, home care, hospice, inpatient, outpatient, you name it, over the, over the years, I've kind of done everything. Um, and I've recently, did you want me to go ahead and go into, um, where do you want me to head next? Just tell, tell us whatever we need to know. <laughs> break it down. Oh, break it down. So I think, um, so as far as my tip for speed reading and how that all came to be, um, I, if you're a nurse and a nursing student, and even if you're just a grad student or a college student in general, the amount of reading that we have to do is just outrageous, right? Totally, totally and agree. yeah, and if you throw on top of that, you're, you're a parent. So like, I'm a mom, I've got three kids. My oldest is 16, my middle one's 13, and my little one's three. And so I've always been working and been in school all the time that I've had my kids. So it's definitely possible. So don't ever think that it's something that's gonna hold you back because you can totally have a family and have your career in school, totally can do that. And so I just kept getting like overwhelmed with all the reading. And I said, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I had heard about speed reading before, but I always thought maybe it was like, you had to have a superpower, I guess. That's, to that's do exactly speed. what I was gonna say. I thought it was like a gift you were born exactly. with. And when I saw you talking about this, I'm like, oh, like you mean I can yeah. learn to do that? So that's, yeah. that's what sparked my curiosity too. I thought it was like a gifted thing. Mm, correct. Yeah, definitely not a gifted thing. It is a skill 100%. And I think people confuse um, like skill and talent together, mm -hmm. skill is something that you learn and you can totally learn to speed read. And actually, um, when I had posted that comment, a lot of the responses were, well, oh, I've got ADHD or, oh, I'm dyslexic or some type of other learning disability, you know, that they've been told that they have. And it's like subconsciously that holds us back from really trying to get better and do better at things. Like we just automatically let that hold us back. And it's definitely not something that's going to hold you back from learning how to speed read if it's something that you really want to do. Um, and like I said, it's definitely a skill. And for me, one of the things that's really helped me in my whole schooling journey and doctoral journey is YouTube. Like YouTube's amazing. There are so many free resources on YouTube. Literally anything you want to know, you can go onto YouTube and learn how to do. And so that's like exactly what I did. And that's what I do with a lot of things in my life in general. I just go onto YouTube and, and there's going to be good information. There's going to be bad information right out there. Right. And so 
I just always suggest going on there and looking at a couple different styles and a couple different ways. You're going to learn how to weed out those credible ones from the ones that are not credible. Right. And I just, that's, and all I did is I looked up a couple different videos and actually one of the first ones that I came across and you was just a Tim Ferriss video. I sure did. I just went in and typed in speed reading okay. and all thousands of videos will come up for you. And usually the most popular ones, you know, will populate first. And right. I just clicked on them and because I was curious, I literally knew nothing about speed reading mm -hmm. at all. And like you said, I thought it was something that only special people did that it was, a, mm -hmm. that, you know, that it was just something for really super smart people like geniuses. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just, I had it in my head. It would just, it wasn't for me, but it was something that I wanted to try to learn more about mm -hmm. because I knew it would help me with my schooling and reading and everything else. Right. So I just went on there and Tim Ferriss was one of the first videos that I saw and he really broke it down step by step. And it's not something that you're going to like watch the video and you're gonna grab a book and oh my gosh, you're gonna be able to speed read. Uh, it's not like that. It's a skill you have to practice and you have- So is it more teaching you how to get the main concepts quickly or, um, cause when I imagine speed reading, it's like flipping pages or going through my iPad, like fast, fast, fast. Is it more reading for, um, major concepts or is it something that the more you practice, you can get down into the detail of the reading also? So there would be two parts I would say to your question. The first part would be it shows you the techniques to learn how to speed read. So learning how to do it is one step of it because there's a, a system, a way that you will need to do it. And then the second step is that there is definitely a component that once you have mastered speeding up your reading, that there is a way that you will start to retain everything that you're reading. So it's not like I'm just flipping and reading you actually are retaining that information. And it does take practice. And there's, it's, you need to learn the technique first. And once you master that technique, the retention will come after. So as an educator, can I just ask, um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of students that I've worked with maybe don't really know their own learning styles, right? So there's all kinds of inventories out there. Like I, I'm thinking of the VARC, learning inventory, you know, are you visual, auditory, um, kinesthetic, that type thing. And, you know, for myself, I would categorize myself as a slow reader mm -hmm. and as a, someone who is definitely more visual and auditory by mm -hmm. true assessment and that type of thing. So the, is that how, is there any particular learning preference and how it relates to speed reading that you know about, or what did you know about yourself? Is that how you would categorize yourself? Um, I think you ask an interesting question because I, I don't like, then this is just my personal opinion. Right. Um, I, I, I don't like people to categorize themselves or to put themselves to label themselves because if I would have gone by a lot of, um, evaluations that I've had over the years, mm -hmm. you know, we all change. We change our learning styles where adult learners are different than younger learners, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we all change and we grow and all of our life experiences have an impact on that. Right. So I would caution people to, to like take the results of some type of test to heart and to have it define them and their learning style when you might truly just not have the right person to influence you to put maybe some different ideas um, into the way that you're approaching different projects or whatever you might be working on. So I would say that first. And I would say for me, I am similar to you where I like auditory, visual. I'm also a big writer, um, but I don't think that has any type of impact on the speed reading mm -hmm. because it is just a skill and mm -hmm. if you are open to learning anything and you just put yourself out there and want to try it and actually give it mm -hmm. a try like in the way you know you should mm -hmm. then you can be successful in doing it and that's what I just want people just to go out there and just to try it yeah. and see if it does work for them and truly to your point 
necessity is the mother of invention, right? So if you're a DMP student or a, you're in some other kind of graduate program, you just have to read a lot and time is at a premium for mm-hmm. all of us, it, for families and work and time is at a premium. Mm-hmm. So I will put in the show notes for anybody that wants to listen, uh, maybe you can give us a list of some of your preferred YouTube videos to get started. So if people are in their car or anything listening to this, maybe uh, maybe just a, a quick recommendation of a place to start. But um, other than just trying it, we can go to YouTube, those type things. Um, is there anything else that we need to know about it or need to think about it before we give a shot? I wouldn't. I would just approach it with an open mind and just that it's something new and just to be open to trying it. And I honestly, I, I, Tim Ferriss is the, literally the only one I can think of because okay. his was the first video I watched. So it does stand out so much in my head. And it's been mm-hmm. a while since I went back and revisited mm-hmm. this. So I can't say, I know there's a couple different ones. And I think um, online and when I've commented on Facebook, I list, I think I linked maybe two or three that I had found but it really is just up to you. And like you said, we all have our own way that we retain information, that we are receptive to information. And even with it being YouTube, we're gonna be influenced and receptive to whoever is presenting that information as well. So you might, the information could be really bomb, but you don't like the person that's presenting it, Mm -hmm. or you like the person that's presenting it, but the information is not really valid and it's not really gonna help you. Mm -hmm. So, I would just go and just be open to it, type in speed reading and see what comes up for you and see what you vibe with and just learn all those tips and tricks and whatever you feel like will help you be successful, I would go with that. Stay tuned for part two of this interview. You've been listening to Dr. Molly Bradshaw and Dr. Tracy Vitali on the DNP Project Podcast. Check out the DMP Project YouTube channel at DNP Success on YouTube.